This is video 162 on my series on financial math for actuarial exam 2. In the last couple videos, we've looked at something called the first order modified approximation to approximate a bond price or the change in a bond price for a given change in the yield rate. We're going to continue that kind of idea here in doing problem 188 from 2017 SOA sample exam where we modify it a bit. We're going to be estimating a bond price with well, something different, not the first order modified approximation, but instead the first order Macaulay approximation. The first order modified duration, uh, approximation uses the modified duration. The first order Macaulay approximation uses the Macaulay duration. And we're going to be given the Macaulay duration. To add a little bit more meat to this, we're also going to derive the approximation. So the first paragraph that you see here is the problem statement itself. This is pretty much the same statement as the problem we did two videos ago in video number 160. And in fact, I'm quoting what the answer here is from video number 160. Krishna buys an N-year bond for 1,000. It's uh, at par, so the price of the bond is the same as the redemption value. The Macaulay duration, which is the same thing we're given in video 160, is 7.959 years with respect to an annual effective interest rate of 7.2%, we want to now calculate an approximation, an estimated price, using the first order Macaulay approximation, not the first order modified approximation. Turns out the first order Macaulay approximation is more accurate. In this case, if the interest rate rises to 8%. Before we solve this problem, which just involves using this formula, which is Kind of a complicated looking formula, but it's not too hard to use, and I would encourage you, in fact, to try to get the answer here before I do the, do the derivation, maybe pause the video. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you the answer. The answer is going to be, answer is 942.54, which is choice B on sample exam problem 188. I would encourage you to derive that first using this formula. I will first derive this formula, and then I'll use it. And then we will do something else. We'll compare the answer that we get, this 942.54, with this one from video 160 that we could use the modified approximation for. This one's bigger, we can already see with the comparison, and we've said it's going to be more accurate. You might wonder, is it always bigger? Will the relative sizes of these approximations always be the same, no matter what the change in the interest rate is, no matter what delta i is? Let's go ahead and start by deriving this first order of Macaulay approximation. It's tricky, and if you've never seen the derivation, it would be very difficult, I think, to figure it out on your own. Probably the first person, maybe Macaulay, maybe somebody else who figured it out, they had to do a lot of experimentation. The key thing is to define a new function, g of i, to be the price of the bond at an arbitrary yield rate i, based on the given coupon payments and the given redemption amount. So this is the price of the bond at an arbitrary yield rate i, uh, accumulated forward in time by the Macaulay duration, d mac years, say, with respect to the given interest rate, i sub 0. So i sub 0 represents the 7.2%. i sub 0 is 7.2% in this problem, or 0 0.072, but it could be something else in a different problem. Okay, This is the key function to think about, and we claim that the derivative of this function at i0 turns out to be 0. And when we use then a linear approximation for this function, we get a pretty simple expression. And amazingly, that simple expression can be solved for this thing to get this approximation, which ends up being a good approximation, again, for the price of the bond at an arbitrary interest rate i that's a little bit away from the given interest rate i0. Okay, But again, to think of this function and differentiating it as being something that would get you this approximation would be a very challenging thing to realize. We did look at a function like this, and in fact, the uh, derivative calculation we're about to do is pretty much the same as the calculation, the derivation, from video 158, four videos ago. I'll put a link to that one up here as well. Um, it's going to be a very similar calculation. In particular, we're going to use the product rule for derivatives. Product rule. 
because I have the, the product of two functions of i. I'm going to differentiate with respect to i, find g prime of i. I've got this function times this function. Remember that i0 is fixed, okay? i is the variable. So I take the derivative of the first function, the derivative of p of i is p prime of i, times the second function, 1 plus i to this fixed number, d mac of i0 is a fixed number, And then I add the first function, p of i, times the derivative of the second function here. 1 plus i to a fixed number, I have to bring that fixed number down in front, like this, d mac of i0. And then subtract 1 from that exponent, so I'd have 1 plus i to the d mac of i0 minus 1. And then you might say, well, I also need the chain rule. I need to multiply times the derivative of 1 plus i, but that's 1, so I don't really need to write it. Okay? I want to show that when I plug in i0 into this, I get 0. There's a couple different ways I could simplify this. I'm going to choose to simplify it in a way that's slightly different than what uh, Broverman's textbook does when Broverman would derives this approximate equation. Just for the sake of recalling some facts, uh, one fact to recall is the definition of the modified duration as the negative of the relative rate of change of p with respect to i, which is a non-negative quantity, actually, <clears throat> because p prime is going to be negative in general. So this quantity in general will be greater than or greater than or equal to zero, at least. And it's also the case, this is a theorem, that this is the same as the Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus i. Okay, I'm going to use those two facts for the sake of recalling it to help me simplify this, or rewrite it, you might say. So, for example, I can replace p prime of i based on this first equality. I can solve this equation for p prime of i by multiplying both sides by negative p of i. So I can go ahead and replace p prime of i by negative p of i times the modified duration at your arbitrary yield rate i times this thing, don't forget that, 1 plus i to this constant d mac of i0. And let me go ahead and also replace the Macaulay duration at this fixed interest rate i0 by taking the fact that this equals this, multiplying both sides by 1 plus i where i equals i0 and I got the p of i there as well, so I can replace this Macaulay duration with 1 plus i0 um, times the modified duration at i0. And then don't forget this part, 1 plus i to the power of d mac of i0 minus 1. Okay, that's the general form, one form of the general formula for the derivative of this function. Let's go ahead and now plug in i0, and we will see that everything cancels. Replace all the things that are just i's with i0. We already have some i0's in there, but everything else, every other i, now gets replaced with i0. When you do that, and then also use the fact that I can combine then this thing with this thing when i is replaced with i0 by adding exponents. I will get 1 plus i0 to the d mac of i0 power, not minus 1, but just that Macaulay duration because I've added those exponents. And now you see when you compare this with this and the negative sign there and the plus sign there, everything cancels. This becomes 0. Okay, so what's the significance of that? How is it related to this approximation? Well, that, the fact that this derivative is zero would imply that the, the linear approximation of g of i based on I, at i equals i zero would be very simple. In general, the linear approximation applied to g would say this, g of i zero plus some small amount delta i would be approximately g of i0 plus g prime of i0 times delta i. That's a linear approximation, a basic idea from calculus. 
but this thing is zero. So this is approximately g of i zero. Now go ahead and use the definition of g of i as this product. Replace i with, well, i zero on the right side and i zero plus delta i on the left side. What happens when we do that? Looking up here, on the left side we get p of i zero plus delta i. I'm comparing it with this thing right here times 1 plus i 0 plus delta i, replacing i with i 0 plus delta i, because I'm evaluating this function here, raised to this constant power, d mac of i 0. That's approximately g of i 0, which is the same thing, but now replace i with i 0. p of i 0 times 1 plus i 0 to the d mac of i0. And now, to finish the problem, as far as the derivation goes at least, just divide both sides by this thing. And that will give you this. You can write p of i0 plus delta i, at least when delta i is small, that's the assumption in the linear approximation is delta i is small, will be p of i0 times this thing here divided by this thing here. Since the powers are the same, you can put those in one fraction to that single power. 1 plus i0 over 1 plus i0 plus delta i, all raised to the power that is the Macaulay duration at i0. Okay, so that's the derivation. You can see it's definitely tricky. Let's use it now based on what we are given. So I zero in the given problem was 0 0.072. That's right up there. P of I zero is P of 0 0.072 is the price of the bond at that interest rate. We bought the bond at par. That's a thousand. What's delta I? And what's the Macaulay duration? We're given the Macaulay duration to be 7.959. And delta i is the change in the interest rate from 0 0.072 to 0 0.08. Delta i is going to be 0 0.008. Let's write those things down. The Macaulay duration at i0, which is 0 0.072, is 7.959. Delta i is 0 0.08 minus 0 0.072. That is 0 0.008. And now we're ready to plug things in. The new approximate price, based on the interest rate going up to 8%, is approximately the old price at the old interest rate times 1.072 divided by 1.08. That's this fraction right here. Raise that Macaulay duration, 7.959 power. This thing is 1,000. We're now ready to use our calculator to get the final answer. And then I'm going to do one more thing after we finish that. 1.072 divided by 1.08 is 0.9925959. Raise that to the 7.959 power. Multiply by 1,000. Final answer here is 942.54. Just like I said it was back up here, which is choice B on sample exam problem number 188 from 2017. Okay, now let's do this comparison thing. The video number 160 where we used the first order modified approximation got 94060. This one we get a bigger approximation of 94254. I will also tell you that the actual price actual price that you can find by using, by thinking about uh, the bond price formula, thinking about present values, is actually 942.89. I would encourage you to go ahead and think about that, though you do need to know n to do that. It turns out you can solve for n based on this information. It turns out n is 11 
I'll let you see if you can figure that out. So definitely this, this Macaulay approximation is definitely closer to the actual price than the modified approximation was, and in fact is bigger, will always be bigger than no, no matter what delta i is. Well, I went on my favorite program, Mathematica, and I made graphs, and I saw that at least in this situation, it was always bigger. The Macaulay approximation was always bigger than the modified approximation, and was always closer to the actual price, no matter what delta i was. What I did was I made three graphs, just going to tell you what I did here, where delta i was the horizontal axis and the price of the bond was the vertical axis. With the uh, modified approximation, what you really get is you get a, a linear function of delta i. And by the way, the price there is a thousand when delta i is zero. That's the modified approximation. It's a linear function of delta i. This is based on i0 being 0 0.072. But it's a similar kind of thing with other i0s. The Macaulay approximation that we just used, this formula here, as a function of delta i, it's definitely not linear. You see the delta i's in the bottom. Think of everything else as constant there and delta i's being the variable. What the graph ends up look like, looking like is a graph like this. It's concave up right there. That's the Macaulay approximation. And you can see it's definitely higher than the modified approximation, no matter what delta i is. They're, they're the same when delta i is zero, which makes sense. And then the actual price, based on different i, delta i's, is higher yet. That's the actual price. based on different delta i's. And I've exaggerated a little bit. The blue and green, the Macaulay approximation and the actual price are actually a lot closer together than this picture looks. The Macaulay approximation definitely gets you close to the actual price, as you can see with this example. Thanks for watching.